UFC 284 delivers. A lot of you guys were, were upset with Uncle Dana for not promoting this fight enough. Uh, for, for him being too focused on his uh, slap fight league. And uh, listen, I think that there was some merit and what people were saying. I mean, this is, again, the first time we ever had the number one and number two pound for pound best fighters on planet Earth throwing down. Uh, yeah, it should have been hyped up a little bit more. So I do felt, uh, excuse me, I did I did feel that this fight did creep up on us. Uh, but but there's a factor that not a lot of people were talking about that, that had uh, a, a, a real impact on that being the case. And that was the fact that Islam Makashev was a, a hefty favorite going into this fight. At times, he, he was as high as a 4-1 to favorite. And I truly believe that that was uh, a, a big part of the reason why people weren't as amped uh, about this fight as some people felt that we should have been. Uh, look, when it was all said and done, Volkanovski uh, proved any doubters wrong. Uh, we're going to get to what we thought about the judge's decision here in a second, and I want to know what you guys thought about it. But but there's one thing that we can all agree on for sure. It was a very close fight, and Volkanovski's stock goes up, if anything, even with the loss. Now, you guys know, anytime we have a fight card that delivers in the way that a UFC 284 fight card did... There's going to be some controversy mixed up in it. Uh, and again, we're going to be talking about that, that the judge's decision in that main event. Uh, but even if you scroll down to the first fight uh, of the event, we had Elvis Brenner defeating uh, Zabara Tukigov uh, via split decision with one of the judges, uh, Mr. Field, scoring this fight for Brenner 30 to 27. Uh, th that decision was absolutely egregious. Uh, and Field should have to answer for his crimes there. Uh, 30 to 27 uh, for Brenner. I mean, I think that was ludicrous. Um, I thought that Tukigov won every single round. Yes, he could have done more, but this brings uh, an, an important point that we have to talk about here. Uh, you know, when a fighter is a massive favorite like Tukigov was, when he misses weight and kind of has a lackadaisical uh, performance, even though he's in complete control of the fight, uh, do we hold that fighter to a higher standard and... Uh, don't we do we not give him the decision just based on the, those uh, x factors there even though he flat out won the fight when you analyze the fight he flat out won the fight i know the significant strikes were somewhat close um but but if you were really paying attention to that fight Tikigov was the fighter that was aggressing he was the fighter landing the cleaner shots you you heard the impact of those shots he was landing and uh, on the other hand brenner was just throwing a lot of fluff out there he stuffed some takedowns he was on the back foot and uh, i thought that Tikigov got robbed there uh now yeah, I might, I might be a little bit more upset than the average Joe based on the fact that I did have him mixed in a parlay with Clidson Rodriguez, who Rodriguez went out there and made quick work of his opponent. But it was what it was. Uh, we bounced right back in, in our next spot with an underdog play on Blake Builder. Uh, props to, to Builder looking very good there. Um, but, you know, again, the, the judges' scorecards, something to talk about a little bit here. Uh, once again, unfortunately, it's a dark cloud that, that uh, glooms over us, you know, in the MMA fight game. Uh, but, but you know what? There was a lot of... Uh, bright and sunny things to talk about and uh, Jack Della Maddalena is the fighter that I want to talk about next Jack Della Maddalena uh, was truly born last night in my opinion uh, as far as just becoming a star in the MMA world yes we were all hyped up on him already I know that he went into this fight as a big favorite which was surprising to many based on the fact that Randy Brown does uh, th does have a lot of respect from uh the, the fight world he's a fighter that has the tallest or excuse me he, has, he is the tallest fighter in the division he has a freakish frame he's a well-rounded fighter this was a step up in competition for jack um and a lot of people were kind of questioning those odds including myself um but the performance that jack della Maddalena just went out there and showcased last night was absolutely stunning cracking rainy brown with that big shot uh making him face plant down to the canvas rushing down to the mat following it up with some ground and pound and eventually sinking in that rear naked choke i loved the way that he held himself and the way that he spoke on the mic after the fight uh, and and we even heard the commentating team talking about it before the fight even kicked off jack was just strolling around out there uh, on the canvas uh like he was about to uh, light up a cigarette and he was just leaning against an old chevy in an alley ready to get in a scrap and, and i love that energy it carried into his post-fight speech where uh he, he just he's just ready to throw down with anybody in the division right now his boxing is silky smooth he's so accurate with his shots uh, the way that he closed the distance here and showed how well versed he is and well-rounded he is i mean I, I was really really impressed and uh before we even talk about volkanovsky uh, anymore i mean 
you, you talk about Jack and what Australia is doing in general. Australia is uh, putting out some of the best fighters on planet Earth right now. Uh, from, from that part of the world, some of the best fighters on planet Earth are coming, coming from there. So it, it's very interesting. It's very intriguing. And speaking of some of the best fighters uh, growing in front of our eyes, Yair Rodriguez. Uh, what a stunning performance from Yair. Uh, I mean, he, he broke down Josh Emmett with those body kicks. His striking is as diverse and dynamic as anybody in the game. You heard Dominic Cruz uh, talking about the fact that there is no fighter like Yair Rodriguez and there's never been a fighter like Yair, Yair Rodriguez. He is his own man. And I tend to agree. Uh, the fact that he is showing glimpses uh, down on the ground now as well, pulling off his first submission victory inside the octagon. That's that's a dangerous man there. Uh, yeah, Emmett did squeak off that first round, in my opinion, got that takedown, kind of squeaked that round off. But Yair was taking over this fight. He was landing heavy shots. He was landing very clean shots. And uh, it seemed like he almost welcomed uh, being taken down because he was just landing elbows at will. And uh he obviously knew that he had a trick up his sleeve with, with the submission game there. He talked about how he pulled off uh, the triangle choke, and that's a sub that you very rarely see uh, inside the fight game these days. So, uh, you know, as we uh, kind of conclude this video, we're going to be talking about the main event. We have the big question, right? What's next for Alexander Volkanovsky? Is it dropping down to the featherweight division and facing off with Yair Rodriguez? That's a fight that I would love to see. And uh, I'll, I'll give you guys... Uh, you know, a sneak peek. I will be leaning Volkanovski in that match. As good as Yair Rodriguez looked, I mean, how good did Alexander Volkanovski look? And look at the difference in the size, uh, you know, of a Volkanovski and Islam Makashev. I mean, that's what is so impressive. You talk about pound for pound. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it sounds kind of weird, but does Volkanovski stay the pound for pound number one? Uh, I mean, not necessarily saying that should be the case, but do you guys catch my drift? Volkanovski was undersized here. He was hanging with Islam in the grappling exchanges, uh, and he ended up uh, really getting the better of Islam, obviously, in the fifth round to conclude the fight. You know, I had a post on my Instagram uh, earlier today uh, saying that if this was a fight to the death, uh, if this was a fight that, that or a fight where there was uh, no time restraints, Volkanovski wins this fight. I think hands down. And if you guys want to talk about that some more, hit me up in the comment section because I can go all day about that. Uh, people were saying, oh, uh, if this was a fight to the death, uh, Islam Makashev had his back and would have just held him there until he took him out. No, that's not true at all, actually, because Volkanovski was defending it per uh, perfectly. And eventually Islam's legs would have gassed out. Volkanovski would have broke out of that because you can't hold that body Tri triangle for more than an hour 30 minutes your legs are going to be done and Volkanovski would finish the job off there uh and if you want to talk about x factors in the forest about grabbing sticks and and, and weapons and stuff like that I mean th that's a uh, an even x factor so there's no lean there but I'm talking about based off what we saw from these two men in the cage Volkanovski is the fighter that I would take uh in that type of match there because the guy has in my opinion, he has the best cardio in the game right now. Volkanovski has the best cardio in the game. Now, that being said, uh, you know, getting a little bit off track here, let's talk about the judges' scorecards. Um, you know, I'm going to cut to the chase here. I scored this fight for Islam Makashev. As much as I wanted Volkanovski to win this fight, I did score uh, rounds one, two, and four for Islam. Um, I scored rounds three and five for Volkanovski. Rounds one and two, pretty close. Um, you know, rounds four, round four, people want to talk about how round four was a, a lock for, for Islam and round five was a lock for Volkanovski. Yes, Volkanovski's fifth round was a lock for sure. Um, but when it comes to that fourth round, yeah, I give it to Islam, but I don't think it was as uh, dominant as people want to talk about. I mean, yeah, he took Volkanovski's back, but Volkanovski was the aggressor. He was the one slamming those hammer fists back to end the round just nonstop. You know, there, there's all this talk about inflicting damage. What damage are you inflicting holding that body lock, not throwing anything there, just turtling up and trying to catch your breath? So, uh, yes, I gave him the round there, but uh, the way people were talking about that round, a little confusing to me there. I think that was closer than some people thought, and uh, I, I would have not been shocked at all if the judges would have went Volkanovski's way here. They didn't. It was in his hometown. Uh, but but if I'm being honest with you guys, and that's something I, I definitely want to do here, right? I want to be professional as much as I wanted Volk to win this fight. I think that, that Makashev was the fighter that deserved to win the fight. And uh, it is what it is, right? The fighter that is most deserving to win should should get the nod there. So if some of you guys saw Joe Rogan and the uh, 
you know, the uh, the Fight Companion podcast, they were all saying they thought Volk was going to win the fight. You guys know they're enjoying themselves a little bit uh, there, and maybe they're not seeing things uh, exactly as clear as they would if they were, you know, sober, sitting down, really uh, narrowed into the screen. So keep take that into consideration too, which you guys know that that's nothing new. We, we know about that, but um, a very close fight. I'm not going to argue with you guys if you think that Volk snagged up one of those other rounds. Um, you know, it, it's debatable, and you guys let me know what you think below. Um, who do you want to see Volkanovski fight next? Does he get that rematch with Islam Makashev, or does he drop back down and take on Yair Rodriguez? Um, I'll tell you what, I want to see the rematch. I think that's what I'm, that's the way I'm going right now. I think I want to see the rematch of this fight. The more I think about it, the more it amps me up. Uh, I think the rematch would favor Volkanovski in a great way. He's now stepped in there. Uh, he's felt the, the strength and the size of Islam. I think he can make some adjustments. And we also know uh, one other point that we have to talk about. Both fighters underestimating specific skill sets from the other fighter volkanovsky underestimating the striking of islam islam was really landing some clean shots there and then islam makashev underestimating the grappling of volkanovsky and i will also throw in the fact that michael bisping was definitely underestimating both of their skill sets there as well as he ignorantly said to start the fight off that if volkanovsky keeps this fight on the feet it's a clear victory for him and if islam gets this fight down to the mat it's a clear victory for him uh you know I think everybody was kind of thinking the same thing there. Uh, John Anik, uh, Dominic Cruz, and the teller himself were all kind of scratching their head, thinking uh, Bisping sounded a little goofy there because we all knew what was was going to come there. We know the potential these guys have. Uh, you know, when, when you really watch these guys consistently and you're on point with, with what we're watching, we know what these guys possess. Islam Makashev, his striking has been underrated for a while. We saw him drop Charles Oliveira, right? That's how he finished that fight. He dropped Charles and then he got the finish there. We know Volkanovski is cut from a different cloth. Now, I didn't know... He was going to have as much success in the grappling uh, situations as he, as he did. That did impress me, but I damn sure knew that, that he is very talented there as well. So he's an absolute stud. Uh, you guys, let me know all your let me know all your thoughts and comments below. Tell me anything you thought about this fight card. I mean, everything. Tell me whatever you guys thought. Who's the real pound for pound uh, king right now? Who won this fight? What fights do you guys want to see next? How'd you guys do from a betting perspective? Let me know below. All right, guys, signing out. Teller. Uh -huh. Welcome to the show. This the MMA fortune teller. Yeah. The MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller.